Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is TrophyNet, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent. Crimson Curse has been released, and I've shown my support to these guys because uh, CD Projekt Red has been really, really supportive of this amazing, well, card based game, but uh, a card based game with incredible artwork and a huge amount of lore behind it. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I've uh, done a lot of Gwent videos already, so you can check them out right here. But the plan for today is to take a first look at the new cards in Gwent Crimson Curse. Which means I've shown my support and I've bought the pre-order pack, which should allow us to open up about 40 kegs with fancy cards. So we got one as a start, apparently. So let's start with that one. Let's just let Shoop open up our first Crimson Curse. Keg. So there we go, the Oxenford Scholar. Give an allied unit vitality for two turns. So the first new term, vitality, is a status that boosts this unit by one on its turn end. And vitality turns can accumulate, so one turn of vitality cancels out one turn of bleeding. So there we have a first indication of bleeding as well, but I'm guessing we're gonna see another one. Oh my god, yeah, there's a lot of extra cards there. Let's toggle the view for a second and go through them one by one. So Dryad Fledgling ha has Harmony. Harmony is also a new term. So boost self by one whenever you play a Squirtel unit with a unique primary category on your side. So for example, if you play a Dwarf and you haven't played a Dwarf since Dryad Fledgling, he's, she's gonna get a boost by one. Again, amazing artwork. Then we have the Fangs of the Empire, which has Poison, give an enemy unit poison. If unit has two poison statuses, destroy it. So if you can manage to get uh, poison on a unit twice, you actually destroy it at right. So a very good uh, kind of alternative way of resetting units. So even just straight up destroying them. And then the Ducal Guard can assimilate. So boost self by one whenever you play a card that is not from your starting deck. So you get boosted when you play cards that are from your opponent's deck or just create other cards. And then we have the Fledder, or Fleeder, I still don't know. I mean, I've played everything in Blood and Wine, which is, by the way, what this expansion is largely based upon. So most of the characters and just creatures are from Blood and Wine from uh, The Witcher 3. Fleeder, destroy an allied unit and gain vitality for four turns. So that's destroying on your side and you gain vitality because you've, of course, sucked the blood out of it. Very interesting in a monster deck. Then the Peller is not actually from... Uh, that's interesting. That's not actually a unit from uh, Blood and Wine. So the Peller is from the base game. So Purify a unit and Purify is remove all statuses. If you checked out my video about um, Ardal at Day, you might have seen uh, me talk about uh, Kalok as well, who does this immensely. And I said then that that card would see a lot of uses right now. Because of course all the... So the vitality and the bleeding are statuses and poison are statuses that can be removed with purify abilities. Svalt Blood Priest, every ally turn on turn end, damage the allied unit to the right by one and then boost south by two. Ooh, that's the return of the boats. That is cool. But, oh, I really like Skellige though. Let's go with the Fleeter. I mean, I have 40 kegs to go through, so uh, there we go. Our first batch of cards and most of the new statuses have been explained, which is really nicely done. So there we go, the pack. We get 40 Crimson Curse kegs. I get the animated Crimson Curse card back. Crimson Curse card back, there we go. And the Blood Armor skin for the Unseen Elder Leader. So uh, let's not wait too long. Let's go through all the kegs. Dancing Star animated, a bomb. Destroy an artifact or damage a unit by tree. So that's an interesting card. I've seen that pass by on Twitter as well. So instead of something like the Bomb Heaver, you can actually choose to either uh, destroy an artifact or deal tree damage. So you have a bit more variety in what you can do with this card. Then the Plumert, a little vampire. Give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns. And if it's bonded, give it bleeding for four turns instead. And bonded is another thing we've see never seen before. So trigger this ability if you control a copy of this card. So if there's already a plumert on the field, you actually give a unit bleeding for four turns instead. Duchess's informant, so there we go. Duchess Anna Henrietta from uh, Toussaint. 
spying, deploy, spawn and play a base copy of a non-spying bronze enemy unit. That's actually not bad. Spawn and play a base copy of a non-spying bronze enemy unit. So take over, just copy an enemy unit, basically. And then the dried flashing, we had that already. And now we get an animated fleeter. That is interesting. So two of these cards are actually animated, but for some reason the Forest Whisperer is not. So Imperial Diviner. So you can actually see, that's actually a cool card. You can actually see Siri on her uh, horse Kelpie over there. So trying to locate, Nilf Guardian Sorceress trying to locate Siri. So purify a unit and also assimilate. Okay, fair enough. And then we have the first Whisperer, deploy in melee, give an enemy poison or give an enemy, an allied unit a shield. So shield blocks the next instance of damage dealt to that unit. So nice that you have that flexibility with that unit, but I want to have an animated card. So let's just go for the Imperial Diviner. Primal Savagery. Damage an enemy unit by two and death blow. That's something we haven't seen before. Spawn a bear abomination and summon it to a random allied row. So that blow is triggered when you actually kill a unit with the first effect of the card. So if you kill the unit with the two damage, then you spawn a five power bear abomination, which is cool. And it's also animated. And then red haze. So another bomb, choose an enemy unit and damage one adjacent enemy unit by its power. That is, that can also be pretty powerful. So it's a one-sided version of treason. A very nice uh, piece of artwork there. And then we get the watchman order, give an adjacent unit a shield. Fall blood cultist, deploy ranged boost a unit by three. If it is still damaged, destroy it instead. So you can actually destroy an enemy with that. And then the Sentry and Knight, damage unit by two, and that blow gain vitality for two turns, which is actually a possible six points on a four power card, which is not bad, but I'm gonna go for this Fall Blood Cultist. Spring Equinox, purify all units on a row. That can actually be pretty powerful. So it's like clear weather for, but for status effects. And animated again, Red Haze. Sentrian Enchantress. Deploy ranged, give an allied unit vitality for two turns, and bonded, give it vitality for four turns instead. So kind of the opposite of the plumage we've seen before. And then the Undying Thirst, that's the blood card from Thronebreaker, if I'm not mistaken. Give an enemy unit bleeding for six turns. So bleeding is one damage per turn. So bleeding is interesting, especially if you use it in a Skellige deck. Since, of course, the Great Swordsman and Dogger Tool Blades will be boosted by every piece of damage that happens. Then we get the Centurion Artificer Formation. That is also something new. If played on the melee row, gain zeal. If played on the ranged row, boost stealth by one. So an automatic effect based on its position. That is pretty cool. So zeal or an extra point. That might actually be pretty powerful, that formation. And then the Nekurat. Order melee drain an enemy unit by one, and it's on a cooldown of two turns. Whenever you play an organic card, reduce this unit's cooldown by one. So draining is damaging by one and boosting yourself by one as well. So that is interesting. It can be a lot, but of course he is pretty weak, and it's an order ability that does not trigger on zeal, so you need to wait a turn to use this. So, hmm. Could be powerful, especially if you can combine it. Maybe there's a few cards that actually benefit from drains. So I'm gonna actually get it. The Centurion Spellweaver. Ah, that's a uh, Professor Fire Blast from Entrome Breaker. Damage unit by one charge, one gain a charge whenever you play a mage. Ah, that's cool, finally. Because I've been wanting to actually make a mage slash sorcery deck and that might actually be of help. The Moondust Bomb, purify unit and damage it by four, so that uh, could actually take care of vitality and stuff like that. Then Rune Word. Give an allied unit a shield and then give it vitality for four turns. It actually is pretty powerful. If you can protect one of your engine units with that. And then the Centurion Envoy Formation. Give two charges to an allied unit on order. But you can get its seal if you play it on the melee row. That is very powerful. Two charges to anything. That is very powerful for Meave decks. And then the Knight again, the Duchess Inform. Yeah, so those are all cards we've seen. The Dryad Matron. Every allied turn on turn ends, move to the rightmost spot on this road and boost an allied unit to the left by one. 
Actually, also a very low power, a low cost engine card uh, for the Squiatel, which is good. Um, interesting though, because they've added a lot of Dryad cards as well, because they have been lacking in uh, Gwent in general. Feast of Blood, an organic card. Give an enemy unit bleeding for six turns. If you control a vampire, you can purify your target first. Interesting nonetheless. And then the Devil's Puffball, damage unit by two and give it poison. And on death blow, give adjacent units poison as well. So possibly two units that get poison and you damage a unit by two as well. Interesting. A lot of the bombs, pretty much all the bombs probably have been added. To Saint Knight Errand. Damage an enemy unit by 2. If it has at least 6 power, damage it by 4 instead. So again, a possible 6 points from a 4 power, a 4 cost card. Cutthroat, give an enemy unit bleeding for 2 turns. Pretty straightforward. And then the Bruxa, damage an enemy unit by 2. Death blow, gain thrive. Ooh, that is interesting. So a unit that can get thrive based on the fact that it kills something. So we're starting to see doubles. Journey Joust, remove an enemy unit's shield, then either damage it by three, or give an allied unit a shield and boost it by three. So it's not a unit, so it's a special card, but it can have its uses. Although I feel like most of the cards that I'm getting are actually pretty low level. I haven't gotten any purples or yellows yet. And then the Traveling Merchant is also new. Deploy, range, shuffle a card from your hand into your deck and then draw a card. Could be... Hmm. I wonder if there are other cards that can actually benefit from this. But for now, I don't see the use. Except if you want to, of course. It's, it's something you can do instead of discarding. But still, it's five for just three. Probably just good for heavy uh, control decks that try to just pull the cards they want. Sandstorm, damage units at both ends of an enemy row by three. So basically six provision for six damage, which is, yeah, pretty straightforward. Ooh, gold. Centurion Royal Knight. So the Centurions have also been added because I don't think there was a single Centurion uh, unit in the game. Uh, both self by two for every other Centurion Royal Guard under your control. That could stack up nicely. So that's an alternative for the... Uh, the Temerian soldiers that are often used. And then the gold card. Ooh, Damien de Latour. Order refresh your leader's ability. If it is disabled, enable it instead. Ooh. Well, that is, that is the first time we get a counter for the usurper. That's a direct counter for the leader ability. Or use your leader ability twice. That is incredibly powerful. Then Siana, also from uh, Blood and Wine, repeat the deploy ability of the next unit you play during this turn. Can also be incredibly powerful. The deploy ability of the next unit you play during this turn. And there, uh, Siana is actually neutral, so she can be added to any deck. And then not the Callus. Damage an allied unit to the right by half of its current power. Then damage an enemy unit by that amount. Not the strongest card. So, going between Damien de la Tour or Sienna. Ah, Damien is cool. But Sienna, I really like Sienna as a, as a character. And that card is just amazing. Because, of course, it shows... Um, the character is cursed in the game. And her curse stems from her birth at the time of the eclipse, which is what you can see in the background, which is nice. No, I'm gonna go for the neutral card. I really like the art style on this card. Look at that. Come on, why won't you? Here we go, Sienna. Moving forward, Svalblood Fanatic. Aha, there we have Berserk again. Berserk returns to Gwent. So Berserk transforms into a bear abomination and Berserk is triggered whenever base power is at half or less than half. So if this unit drops to two power or below, but still alive, you actually transform it into a bear abomination, which only has one extra power, but of course, you can get the benefit from damaging this unit if you do it yourself, which is nice. Ooh, that's a nice card. Dryad's Caress. Give an allied unit vitality for six turns. And if you control the Dryad, you can purify the allied unit first. That's a lot, possibly, because vitality can be, of course, countered after that first turn. But 
possibly against 6 points and a Purify. Broccolon Sentinel, another dry damage and enemy unit by 2 and death blow. Summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this row. Uh, and summoning, but summoning wouldn't trigger the deploy ability again, would it? That is... hmm... Maybe not that powerful as you might think. A Garcane, damage a bleeding enemy unit by its turn duration. So that means that if a unit has three bleeding turns left, you can actually damage it by three. Could be a lot, because of course his base power is already four, so you get your points back, your provision cost back. Ha! Clear all row effects from your side and boost an allied unit by four. For every row effect cleared, decrease the boost by two. That is... A good way to actually clear row effects. Small Blood Ravager, damage an enemy unit by two. And Bloodthirst 2 give it bleeding for two turns as well. So possible six points there. Starting to get a lot of doubles, but Inspirational Ballad give vitality to an allied unit for six turns. So that's the direct opposite of the Undying Thirst card on the left there. And then we get a uh, purple. We have Nighthood split six boosts randomly between all units on an allied row. So that's the direct opposite of the Spectral Whale, which is cool. Wildkarl, transform into a champion of Svalblood. So that's the... ooh. And that even has an order ability. So if you drop to two or below... You, that is really cool. You, you transform into the champion of Svalblood. And that thing can destroy an allied unit and then heal itself on order. And it has 12 powers, so that is really, really cool. But of course, if it's destroyed immediately, he won't transform. But that is that is a really powerful card. Katakan, Thrive, a Thrive unit with 6 power. Deploy spawn an Akimara and summon it to this row. Deathwish, repeat the deploy ability. And the Akimara have 2 power. And it has Thrive. Well, I would feel like Thrive is pretty useless on a card that already has 6 power. I mean... It might trigger once or twice. A good card for a Gernikora deck, but I think I'm going to go for Vildkarl. It's the more interesting unit. For me at least, for me at least. It has more risk to it as well, but really, really cool card. Ooh, a gold card on our first draw there. Vivian, Oriole. Destroy an enemy artifact and boost self by its provision costs. Risky to put in your deck. Because of course, if you don't see... Artifacts being played, this will just not happen, but even if once your opponent actually uses at least one artifact, this is at least 11, I think, because I think every every artifact card is five, at least 5 provision costs, so you get a unit of 6 and you destroy an artifact, so... That's a pretty good card, so it's a purple. This Fall Blood Butcher, so that's also a returning card. Damage an allied unit by two, then give an enemy unit bleeding for three turns. Which, of course, if you're going for a self damage deck, it's gonna be very, very powerful. I feel like I can finally make that deck. And then a purple. Shiny. Curse of Corruption, destroy the highest unit. So it's a safer, well, a lower power version of Scorch. So it only destroys one highest unit, but. I mean, this is a cheap alternative for Scorch, because Scorch, I think, is 14 provisions. Or along those lines, so very expensive, and you need to... Usually this should be enough, Curse of Corruption. And then the Weeping Willow gains a shield and deploy on melee, gain vitality with a duration equal to the amount this unit is boosted beforehand. Interesting. So it could technically go on for a while. And then Sigvald is actually animated. Damage unit by one, cooldown one. Berserk, damage unit by two instead, with a two reach. And you can damage your own units as well. So this is a, a more powerful version of um, the crazy guy, you know what I'm talking about, who spawns three skulls. You know what, let's go for Sigvald. Although Curse of Corruption is a general card. Yeah, let's go for the, yeah, the, the neutral cards first. The Dried Ranger is also new. Harmony and deploy damage an enemy unit by two and give it poison. Definitely not bad. Oh, and we start with a purple again. Roderick of Duntine. Spying. Deploy. Look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one. So basically a spying version of the Nagalfar. 
the 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 you know the the draw card the the wild hunt boat northern wind is new damage unit by four death blow banish it so you can actually destroy units and banish it completely for units that you fear that might come back or might be used as a graveyard consumption or something like that. And then another plummet. The Dryad Grovekeeper, yeah, they're definitely banking on the Dryads. Give an allied unit vitality with a duration equal to the number of other allied Dryad units. Could be nice. Uh, lots of doubles, but we have another gold card. Ah, Sianna's back again, god damn it. Then Oriana, another blood and moon, blood and moon? Another blood and wine character. Vampire, give an enemy unit bleeding with a duration equal to the number of allied vampires. Every ally turn on turn end, boost self by the number of bleeding enemy units. That is incredibly powerful. Uh, and then King Rugner, which is actually, if I'm not mistaken, that is the grandfather of Siri. King Rugner of Sintra, right? Yeah, so that's the uh, the, the husband of Calante, so Siri's grandmother. King Rugner, deploy on melee, remove shields from all units, then boost self by three for all for every shield removed. I'm gonna go for Oriana. There we go. No doubt in my heart about that. There we go. And another purple. Sirsa, Dryad, Harmony, the damage an enemy unit by two, and that blow boosts a unit in your hand by two as well. Very Swiss knifey unit. And then Visigurd is actually uh, Queen Neve's husband, if I'm not mistaken. Or not. Visigurd. Am I mistaken? I thought that was Queen Neve's husband. But gain charges equal to the number of boosted allied units. And on order, damage an enemy unit by one. And he starts with one charge. That could be really powerful as well. And a Queen Neve deck, actually. And then Milton the Perak Peran, another blood and wine character, damage an enemy unit by one, death blow, damage adjacent enemy units by two. If Palmerin is in your hand, trigger this unit's death blow ability even if the enemy unit survived. So possibly 10, but it's very, very specific because you need to kill it with one blow unless you also have Palmerin in your hand. So I think Visigurd is the way to go for that one. Another purple, Triant Boar. Move Trian Boar to the other row and heal it on melee. Or move Trian Boar to the other row and damage an enemy unit by two on range with a cooldown of one. So you continuously move that unit, which is good for a movement deck. And then we get another Curse of Corruption. That sucks. Arnvald, transform a damaged allied unit into, into a bear abomination. I'm going to go for the Trian Boar. Looks like a really cool creature as well, by the way. A, a tree, a tree made boar. Good for me. Ooh, there are bronze cards that I haven't seen yet. Menagerie Keeper, damage an enemy unit by two. If you have a tactic card in your hand, give it bleeding for two turns as well. Simple for a low power card. And now we get another turtle, uh, purple over there. The Proto Fleeter. Deploy damage an enemy unit by three and dominance. Drain an enemy unit by three instead. Um, so dominance is something they've added uh, while the, some of the updates were going. I don't know specifically which update it was. But dominance just means that it triggers if you control the highest unit. So that's just a straight up 10 pointer possibly. But it's really high in provision to actually get that. Hmm, might be missing something. I feel like there might be another card that actually benefits from drains. Because it really put a high price on training units. Goody. Alp, another bronze card we haven't seen before. Another vampire. Damage an enemy unit by two. If Alp is under Blood Moon, drain an enemy unit by two instead. So Blood Moon has returned as well. Haven't seen the card yet. Or anything that might trigger a Blood Moon. But it's supposed to be a row effect as well. I do love the design of the Dryad cards. I mean, they're, they're, they're just gorgeous, aren't they? I mean, you haven't we, we haven't seen many triads in the games in the normal games, uh, but that looks gorgeous. But purple cards, Trian Boar and Curse of Corruption we have, so we're going for Palmerin. God damn it, Palmerin or Palmerin de Lonfal. Damage an enemy unit by two. If you get a death blow, give adjacent allied units shields. If Milton is in your hand, trigger this unit's death blow ability, even if the enemy unit survived. So there we go. So definitely something you need uh, Milton as well for, but 
That's that's a nice actually combination. So it kind of fits with the Aug Serret uh, type of combinations as well. And they're being generous in our last five kegs. We get another purple. Viltkarl we have. Then the Knighthood we've seen before. And the Weeping Willow as well. I'm going to go for Knighthood then. Because, I mean, I like the Spectral Whale as well. And with the boost that can give us some uh, very nice combos. And our final gag is everything else for duplicates. Uh, probably nothing new. No, nothing new. So, okay, that was, that was uh, 40 gags all down the drain. And uh, there we go. Another bronze card that we only had one of. Because uh, that means that we're done with the gags, but we're not done with the video just yet. So they also changed the provision cost for some leaders, as you can see. So a lot of my decks are now invalid. So I'm going to have to watch that uh, rather soon. But let's mill our spare cards and we get uh, 1,230 scraps and 20 meter lap out of That's something. And the first thing I want to check out is the new reward book. Because if I'm not mistaken, we're going to have to unlock new leaders. So if we go over here... We got five new leaders, so we know what the, the new, uh, well, discussions, the new Gwent Edge episodes are, are gonna go about. So, the new Skellig leader himself, Svalblood. 16 provisions, damage an allied unit by one and five charges. Once all charges have been exhausted, spawn a bear abomination and summon it to a random allied row. So, 10 points in total, but you can actually get damage on your own units as well but that looks creepy as hell look at that top face just animating that's a horrifying monster then we have the new squire leader is dana mead mead blah, blah, blah. not the name i'm actually with familiar with the fair haired lady or is that oh no that is from the books never mind but Play a Squirtle card from your deck with zero provision cost or less. This value is raised by one for every unique primary category among Squirtle cards in your starting deck. And I think that can go pretty high. I think you can actually go up to 8, 9 or 10, which is basically a free gold card if you want to. So I'm going to have to check that out, what we can do with that. But again, a gorgeous card. Then, of course, the guy that it's all about, that love van der Edetin, the uh, evil counterpart to um, Regis. That love van der Edetin, damage unit by two, and you have three charges. And on death blow, spawn an Ekimara and summon it to a random allied row. So every time you kill something with his ability, you get another vampire in the mix. The master vampire himself. That is another very awesome card. And basically the team of the Crimson Curse expansion as well. Then we have our new Northern Realms leader is Queen Calante herself. So as I said before, Ciri's grandmother. Uh, play a Northern Realms faction card from your hand and then draw a card. So basically a free play from your hand. Which is more tactical than you can think. Because that means you can actually play two engine cards. Or two cards that can actually boost themselves without any possible counter that can be extremely powerful but of course only once that is yeah that might be an interesting one to make combinations with and then of course last but not least our new Nilfgaard leader Anna Henrietta herself the uh, ruler of Toussaint create and play a card from your opponent's hand Ooh. And that means with Damien in the mix, that Damien card can actually replay your leader ability, but only for Nilfgaard, which is uh, creepy. Yeah, that might be incredibly powerful, actually, if you get Damien off. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm also actually sad that they didn't make Damien uh, a neutral card, so you can add it to every deck. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to spend my reward points towards those new leaders, and uh, you'll be seeing videos about them specifically pretty soon in the weeks to come now to end the video i'm not gonna make a deck because i want to actually put some thought into making another deck but i'm definitely gonna make a vampire uh inspired deck as a start but i want to just check out what some of the high power new golden cards are because we haven't seen everything yet of course the portal summon two random units with four provision costs from your deck on both sides of this card hmm i'm gonna have to see what cards that actually would benefit the most from because, of course, four provision cards aren't usually the strongest of cards. Then the Great Oak. 
Damage an enemy unit by the number of cards to the left of Great Oak, then boost that by the number of cards to the right of Great Oak. Also a very versatile card, either boost them immensely, and 8 is a very high base number as well. That is cool. The Crimson Curse itself, I'm gonna take the animated card. Destroy an allied unit, then apply a Blood Moon Row effect to both allied rows and set its duration equal to the destroyed unit's power. That is... Ooh. And Blood Moon itself means every allied turn on turn start boosts a random vampire on this row by two. That can be enormously powerful. Which means, yeah, that's also the reason why it's 11 uh, provisions for it. But of course can be countered pretty easily as well. But if you have vampires already, you get four points immediately. And destroying an allied unit can actually help you out as well. So definitely worth the provision cost if you play it right. The Land of a Thousand Fables. The Play any special card from your deck, more of a, a utility card than anything else, but again, gorgeous card. I don't even see it in color and I think it's a gorgeous card. Then we have Queen Adalia, spawn and play a base copy of a bronze unit from your hand, then give it shield. So again, something that can yeah, combine well with other uh, soldier cards that you can only get two from but benefit from multiple copies, that could be cool. Then we get the Svalblood Totems. On a Svalblood Fanatic on both sides of this card, damage adjacent units by two on order as well. So triggering their abilities immediately. But that is cool. So that self-damaging team is going to be really, really cool to play around with. Artis, whenever a unit is played, damage it by half its current power. But yeah, on both sides. Ooh. That is interesting as well. And you can see, oh, look at the shadow. He turns in, his shadow is a bear. That is nicely done. Ooh, and there we have the man himself. That love, higher vampire. Look at that. That wish, summon this unit from the graveyard to the same row. This unit's ability is limited to three uses and does not refresh when it leaves the battlefield. So on the end of a turn. But that mean I don't consume decks, that can actually be very, very powerful. And it can't really be countered except for a lock. Uh, but that's 15 points, if you can play it right. Especially in an Araka screen deck or something like that. Because uh, of course it's not going to trigger if you just trigger the Death Wish ability, but otherwise very nice card. Prince Ansees, formation, order, damage an enemy unit by 4 if Prince Ansees is boosted, Duel an enemy instead. So you can get him to boost immediately with the formation, but then he doesn't have zeal and vice versa. You either have zeal and it's not boosted then. Duel an enemy instead. That can be incredibly powerful, especially if you put him on the range throw so you can get the formation immediately to the boost immediately to keep him alive a bit longer than boost him further. That's a nice addition. Then Vivian in her normal state, Vivian de Tabri, set a unit's power to its provision costs. That can be powerful as well. Especially for like very low powered units with a high provision cost, like the Geralt cards. And I think there's a Regis card, which is, yeah, here, the Regis Vampire card. Just two power, but 13 provisions. Then the Water of Brokilon spawn and summon a Dryad Fledgling to an allied row. If you control a Dryad, spawn two Dryad Fledglings and summon them to an allied row instead. Not the most powerful, but you can get multiple Dryad Fledglings and they all have harmony. So that might boost up nicely. So yeah, maybe. I can see the potential there. Then the Hand Gate Sword. Damage an enemy by two. And that blow their spawn and play a base copy of it. Ooh, so that can actually trigger multiple types and they're all artifacts so if you can combine that with an artifact heavy deck you can have your field filled with artifacts that's an interesting card i'm just gonna go up to the provision nine cards the one that we haven't the ones that we haven't seen yet and the rest we'll check out in later videos i don't want to make this too long which it probably already is and it looks like we might actually be at the end already Oh no, 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 no. We have Grégoire de Gorgon. Damage an enemy unit by one and boost self by six if you get a death blow off. And gain his shield, but of course it's only one damage. So very situational. But possible. And you get a lot out of it 
if he manages to pull it off. And then, of course, Regis Bloodless. I've seen this card on Twitter. That's an amazing animation. Look at that. Damage unit by four, and that blow banish it with a reach of two. So again, something that can really be extremely tactical. Turn in Shalemar. Finally, Shalemar and Gwent as well, with the same artwork as in Thronebreaker. On the melee row, damage on Nilf Guardian enemy unit by seven. Or ranged boost self by two for every non nilf Guardian unit from your opponent's faction under your control. That is really, really peculiar. That is, yeah, very specific. Then, Volve, play a nature card from your deck. Pretty simple, but lovely card. And then Artorius Vigo. Assimilate and create and play a one power copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck. Create and play a one power copy of a bronze unit from a starting deck. Hmm. There's probably a few cards that can actually be useful for. Don't really realize what. But to end it, let's just pick one more. Yeah, the Scepter of Storms. Scepter of Storms spawn and play Biting Frost, Impenetrable Fork, or Torrential Rain. Uh, if it, is it random? I think it is, right? Because you don't create it. It's just a random weather effect. Peculiar. And the Tesha Mutna Sword, so the Vampire Sword, damage an enemy unit by four. If it has a shield, destroy it instead. So a lot of artifacts that actually have deploy abilities, which is interesting. But um, but that I'm actually gonna end it because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan a few more videos with just uh, teamed decks, a bit like I did with the Witcher deck and the Dead Bugs deck. Uh, just interesting decks that should also be powerful enough to carry you through a lot of the game, especially the new game. So uh, look forward to that. If you want to discuss Crimson Curse uh, further with me, please do. You can do it right here underneath the comment section. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of whatever we're going to do with Gwent next. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. Goodbye.